Andy here and today I wanted to make a video about the books that I read when I was in college getting my bachelor's degree in Ameri no, English with an emphasis on creative writing. I thought this would be interesting for a few reasons. One, to see if, if you also have a bachelor's degree in English to compare our curriculum because I went to school in Los Angeles County and I'm sure every school has very different reading assignments. And then also, I don't know, maybe if you're interested in getting a degree in English or you're curious what type of books people read. Uh, also just to nerd out about <laughs> literature for a few minutes because take every opportunity to do that that I can. So these are the books that I read. Just keep in mind I have my associate's degree in American Sign Language Interpreting and only my bachelor's degree in English with an emphasis on creative writing so this is just about two years of reading. Anyways let's get to it. These are in no particular order and these are also only the books that I have so I'm sure that there are some that I'm missing or can't even remember and I'm gonna touch a little bit give like a little bit of a description on each one. Let's start over here. The first one that I have is The Portable Dawn we did read some of Dante's Inferno, although definitely not all of it in my classes. And to be honest, I can't even remember which class we read this in, but fantastic book. I'm not going to talk too much about this one because I have talked about Dante's Inferno so much. I will leave my video of the best horror books ever written down below and Dante's Inferno is definitely in there. The next thing that I read was Pablo Neruda's 21 Poems and a Song of Despair. These are just, yeah, like it says, little poem, a little poem book in there. That I read for a creative writing class, but I don't remember which one. This is the 16th century verse, but this just has tons of different verses and poems and all sorts of stuff from the 16th century, I'm guessing. <laughs> Next, I had troubadour poems. These are from the south of France. This was interesting. We did read a lot of these in one of my classes as well. We touched on British poetry. This is 1603 to 1660. Next up, we read a lot of Petrarch. Petrarch is a poet who romanticizes love and relationships and so he wrote all of his poems about I believe this girl named Laura and they were poems like she's so beautiful I can't even look at her her skin is so white it burns my eyes placing the woman on the pedestal type of poetry that was all his and I, I think that that's kind of like what William Shakespeare's my mistress's eyes are nothing like the sun is like almost poking fun at is that like Petrarch ideology of romanticizing love but anyways, read a lot of Petrarch poems. Next up, we did read The Writer's Notebook and we also read Introduction to Literature. This was one of my favorite classes because it had poetries, uh, short stories, as well as novels that we read in this class. So this was kind of a mixture of everything. We did read a lot of plays too because I did take a playwriting class. This was Proof by David Auburn. I have talked about this one before. It's like a man who he writes proof, math proofs, and he's like slowly kind of losing his mind and his daughter's taking care of him. It's a fantastic play and I think it's actually a movie as well. The Cryptogram by David Mamet. I don't remember this one. Woman in the Scarecrow. I don't remember this one either. And this was another proof because I had ordered this on Amazon. It got lost. I went to the store at school and bought it. And then like five months later, another proof showed up. And I was like, all right, I guess I got two of those. <laughs> I also read Trade and Generations by Debbie Tucker Green. The Clean House by Sarah Rule. These are just other plays from that, as well as The Caretaker and the Dumb Waiter by Harold Pinter. This is one of my favorites that I read. This is If Not Winter, Fragments of Sappho. I think Sappho is credited as being like the first poet ever. <laughs> she lived on the island of Lesbos from about 630 BC. And these are, that's, I mean, that's exactly what it is, just fragments of her poems. And so you have like the original and then what it's translated to. And a lot of it, a lot of it is just, you know, tiny snippets and it's just so cool to go through and see. Like this one just says, and on the eyes, black sleep of night. Like these are, this is a really cool book to have. I'm, I'm very glad that we got introduced to this in class and we went through and like marked some of our favorite stuff and talked about what we thought it meant. And this was, this is just an awesome book for any like literary nerds out there, a, a cool one to have. And then we did read Jane Eyre in college, which was my first time reading it by Charlotte Bronte. And this is one of my favorite books ever. I know I did the best horror books ever written, but I'm kind of dabbling with doing just the best books ever written. And this will surely be in there because I do love Jane Eyre. It's just such a cool book of like, it's a romance and a love story, but then it's also got some 
thriller aspects, horror aspects, some supernatural stuff thrown in there. Like, it's just a cool book, a coming of age story. It just has a little bit of everything and I love it. The next thing I have is a Shakespeare book. I took a I think a few Shakespeare classes and so these this is just the complete work of Shakespeare we read tons of plays so I'm not gonna go through them all but we read comedies and tragedies and uh, historical plays and everything in between so in my college I'm not sure if this is a thing throughout the nation or if it was just when I was in college or just my particular college every single one of my teachers had a hard on for Juno Diaz so we read tons of Juno Diaz books this is the only one that I bought so I must have rented the other ones but this is this is how you lose her. And Juno Diaz's work, from what I remember, a lot of them are like just short stories. They're written in a nonfiction manner, but it's never explicitly stated that it's nonfiction. It's kind of like a Bukowski book where you're reading it and you're like, this seems like it happened to you or that you did this, but I kind of hope that it's fiction. Some of it is like very violent or disturbing in different ways, but all of my college teachers love Juno Diaz. Curious to know if you guys got a degree in English, if your teachers loved him. He's a fantastic writer, but some of his work can be quite disturbing to read. And then I also read Mouse and The Kindness of the Hangman. This is by Henry Oster. These are both about the Holocaust, and this one is an account of, I believe, his parents' experience in the Holocaust, and it's written kind of in like cartoony, comic booky type of way. Uh, but you know obviously very disturbing, but there's a lot of use of like different animals to represent different people and then this is actually the author's um, Experience in the Holocaust. Oh, this is an autograph copy. I didn't even know that man. This is a fantastic book I mean, it's obviously hard to get through. It's hard to read. He actually came and talked to our class he did make similarities about the things that he'd experienced and things that were happening in our present day and it was just a great experience, a fantastic book, highly recommend if you guys, I mean honestly if you guys haven't read either of these, highly recommend, but this was one, definitely said this wrong, it's The Girl in the Flammable Skirt by Amy Bender. This is a collection of short stories and if this is the one that I'm thinking about, yes, okay. This one I really liked. Her short stories dealt with a lot of interesting topics. The stories aren't exactly based in reality and you have to have some kind of suspension of disbelief to get into them. I really liked this book a lot. I remember reading this and being um, pretty impressed by it. This one, unfortunately, I don't remember much of. It's called The Museum of Unconditional Surrender. I'm gonna butcher this person's name. Dubrovka Yugorisic? Yugorisic? I'll just put it on the screen. But it's um, actually a Yugoslavian writer, and it says the novel begins in a Berlin zoo with the contents of Roland the walrus's stomach displayed beside the pool after he passed away. These objects, a cigarette lighter, lollipop stick, beer opener, etc., like the fictional pieces of the novel itself are seemingly random at first but eventually coalesce meaningfully and poetically so i do remember this being more of a an experimental type writing style because i did take an experimental writing class one of the last stories that i uploaded i have my stories always linked down below and i think the last one that i uploaded on there which i think is the first one if you click on it I, I believe that's the story that I actually wrote taking this class. But anyways, the thing that sucks about being an English major is that you're reading so many books at one time. So you're reading short stories, poems, plays, novels, and so you don't really have a lot of time to digest and like sit and analyze each piece. So with things like Jane Eyre and stuff, that's fine because a lot of it is just like, I mean, there's a lot under the surface, but it's not a story like this where you kind of have to sit down and dissect it. So unfortunately, I don't really remember much of it and I don't feel like I had enough time to go through. But this is a lot of the reason why I ended up buying a lot of my books is because I knew I would go back and revisit them. And so many of these I have. So this one is definitely one that's my, on my list to go and revisit, to spend more time with and analyze further because I do think that this would be an interesting book to read. Let me know if you guys have read this one. I also have this theory and criticism. That's kind of what it is. We just uh, went through different people like we talked about Plato, Aristotle, Freud, and a lot of different things and it was just theory and criticism about literature. So that was a cool class but at the same time I feel kind of like I do with that book where there was so much to cover you honestly couldn't fit it into one semester but one of my favorite things about that class is we were talking about capitalism and we got to pick a novel and uh, 
write an essay about it and I asked if I could write about American Psycho and my teacher was like yes definitely so I got to write a whole essay on American Psycho. I used horror any way that I could in college and a lot of my teachers were really um, accepting of things like that especially with you know something like capitalism and American Psycho I mean the two go hand in hand so that was like one of my highlights in college was being able to use American Psycho for literary purposes. This also is the complete poems and major prose of John Milton. I did take a John Milton class and then we did talk about John Milton because he's just like top tier fantastic literary god. If you guys haven't read Paradise Lost, it's great but then also a lot of his essays and things just about the time period that he lived are really entertaining too. I'm sure that there are others that I've read. We read tons of short stories so obviously I can't talk about every single one. Nobody would be interested in watching that video, but this is just kind of like a taste of the curriculum that I had. I really enjoyed being an English major for a variety of reasons. I had always been a writer. I'd always, I've written stories since third grade. So it wasn't that I thought that I had to go to college to become a writer. So I was gonna stick with deaf studies and then a lot of stuff happened to where I ended up actually changing my major. I am so thankful that I did. I mean, if you read my stories before college and after co college, they are just, night and day. The tools and the uh, analytical skills that I developed in college were just immeasurably important to the way that I read, analyze text, and even write myself. So if you guys are thinking about going to school to be an English major, obviously it's different for everyone, but for me personally it was such an important part of my development as a writer, as a reader, and um, as someone who just loves literature, I was able to read and understand works that I've never been able to understand on that kind of level before. So, so thankful that I ended up getting my bachelor's degree in English and I do really use it every day. I know a lot of people go to school and get a degree and they never use it, but I really do. I write every day, I read every day, I make videos about books every day. I really do use my degree every day and I'm, I'm very thankful for that because there's nothing that I would rather be doing besides talking about books. Anyways, I hope this video was at least entertaining. I'm not sure who this video is for, but I still hope that it was interesting to watch. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon with another video. Bye guys.